welcome back everyone to the second part of the third episode of Star Trek Adventures, the Blue Jay Generation. Um, let's real quick um, have a scene I forgot before we went for break that we wanted to talk to Starfleet Command about altering Lieutenant Archer's <coughs> files a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Who is going to be doing this communication? Captain Dren, Commander Sar? I'll do it. Okay. So um, I'm going to guess that you go to your ready room. Yeah. Okay. So we find Captain Dren in his ready room right after this meeting of the senior staff to kind of go over the um, finer points of our mission to try and infiltrate the Maquis. Um, and your so just for clarification, you're calling Starfleet Command to try and get Lieutenant Archer's files altered so that the Maquis will see that she's been a little bit more rebellious than she actually has been. Right. Okay. Um, so you call Starfleet Command, and I think that the you probably get some kind of pencil pusher starfleet desk person to direct your call um when they notice of course that it's the bellerophon and that it's the captain of the bellerophon and probably um you can also say like this is the mission we're on and it's of the utmost importance they will send you straight on up the chain of command to admiral necheyev um, she appears on your screen. It's a human woman with short, cut, close, close cropped blonde hair. Um, she would be familiar to you because she's the flag officer of Starfleet, which means that any kind of negotiation related um, Starfleet, like official, um, officially sanctioned negotiation, she would be there, like front runner, the kind of like the face of Starfleet at the moment. Um, so she answers your hail, your your call, and says, Captain Dren, good to hear from you. I heard that there might be uh, something you needed for your recent mission. That's correct, Admiral. Um, we have a, a lead on the, uh, the locations, perhaps, uh, of a Maquis cell or <clears throat> the beginnings of one therein. And uh, part of our mission is to discover the location of uh, Maquis bases or encampments. And uh, I've got a pretty good mission in the works now. And I just need uh, my <clears throat> infiltrator, uh, Lieutenant Archer, I need her record to reflect that uh, she might not have. Uh, solid loyalty, so to speak, to uh, Starfleet commands, uh, maybe some light insubordination, nothing that would get her <clears throat> dispelled or, or um, uh, decommissioned, but uh, something that would give anyone who was looking at her record the idea that she might want to defect or sympathize with the Maquis. Is that something that's doable, Admiral? Um, I'm sorry, Captain. I don't remember any kind of infiltration uh, in your uh, assignment. You were supposed to discover the location of the bases in the Badlands. Um, have you been unable to do so? We would have sent uh, a more qualified officer if what we wanted was infiltration. I uh, And she pulls, like you can see her look away from the screen. Obviously, she's pulling up Lieutenant Archer's logs but she says um, lieutenant archer is a uh, capable combatant but from what i can see she didn't really study any kind of covert or specialized forces in her time at the academy right i viewed her as a as someone who is green enough that they would uh accept the fact that she maybe would side with them on certain things. It was an opening that I didn't think I could dismiss. Um, if your orders are to halt the mission, of course I will obey, but 
I just saw a, uh, an opportunity. I mean, of course not. You, we need to find these Maquis rebels and put a stop to their actions before it comes to war. But um, if you really think that infiltration is the only way, I just wish that there were anyone in your vicinity that had more specialized training. Um, and I would like to for you to go ahead and give us a roll to see like how persuasive you are um, in terms of like if she's going to demand that you wait or if she needs some more reassurance from you i think that this is definitely um probably you're trying to prove to her that what you've decided is the right course of action for the situation is indeed the right course of action so probably it's presence and command is my guess um i'm clenching and uh, i think that it's it's the regular role do you have any focuses that you think fit here I have persuasion. Yes, so that definitely fits. So yes on the focus. And then I think that this is a uh, difficulty of three. Um, you'll be rolling the normal. Nope, not complication range. That's oh, a, sorry. That's a totally different thing. Sorry. Um, the difficulty oh. isn't something that you ever put in your dice roller. It's just something that you oh, need. Oh, right, yeah. right. Okay. It's so, something I have to beat with my dice. Gotcha. Yes. So okay. um, you can go ahead and roll your regular two dice um and a difficulty three task and if you would like to add more after if it doesn't succeed then you can still after the roll um do more things to try and push that forward yeah uh focus use yes no complication task no task roll uh, it or should default to two <clears throat> so you're rolling two dice is all that it is oh it should default to two it okay, should okay. default to two yes cool okay Okay, so you got two, so um, you needed three. So what you can do to get an extra die is um, if you had momentum, you can spend momentum. You can add to threat to roll an extra d20. Um, so uh, just just as a, a way of, uh, so I know, um, yep. how do you get a two? Uh, you would get a two if the number that you rolled was uh, five or under because your command is a five. So it would count as two successes. If you rolled a one, it gotcha. also counts as two successes. But gotcha. um, okay. because you used a focus. <laughs> but your rolls were, I think I'm seeing an eight and an 11. Okay. So neither of those was below five. Okay. So um, in this game, you want to add one of your attributes and one of your com and one of your disciplines together. If you use a focus, which are basically like the classes you might have studied at the academy, each person has six focuses. Then any number that is below your discipline, so in this case it's command five, would roll two successes. If you don't gotcha. use a focus, then any roll that rolls one is two successes gotcha, if you okay. buy an extra d20 with determination it automatically counts as having rolled a one so that would be two successes um you can buy uh, with momentum if you had momentum but since the scene just started you don't really um mm. i do have a determination um <clears throat> which you can use to automatically give you two successes if you want um, to. or you can just add to threat to roll another d20 to try and get another success you're trying to get 17 or lower so right. that's pretty you're, you have a pretty good chance on a regular d20 determination is very hard to come by in this game it's that's why i was thinking about saving it mm -hmm. <clears throat> um so if i add to my threat yeah so i just get an extra threat which i can use to make your guys's lives harder but it's still it's just a chance though so i just yes, roll it's just another you d20, roll a d20. Mm -hmm. okay let's do that let's add a threat and whoops okay Roll a d20 with the right keyboard. Glitch. I'm I have sure. to roll under a 17, so hopefully. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. You did. See, there yeah. you go. Yay. So you, you got the three successes necessary. Um, so what I think what happens is that she goes over your report as to what is required for the mission and why you think that it's necessary to have someone infiltrate and i think she she agrees with you she sees the the merit in your deciding to put 
um, an officer like trying to try and infiltrate. She's a little bit questioning qu- questioning why that officer should be the green lieutenant. But right. you know, she- what I want to what I want to say as Zeke is. It's because we're on a role-playing show, Commander. <laughs> it's because we're on a show, Commander. Um, and that's that was the more uh, entertaining choice. <laughs> yes. uh, it's better off if someone in the cast, and she's just like, oh, yes, I'm an NPC. <laughs> Good to know. That makes sense. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she basically, like, defers to your judgment because you did succeed on that role that um, this is the best situation, and she will alter Lieutenant Archer's... Um, log to have a couple of minor demerits um citing rebellious behavior questioning superior officers and etc um nothing so far as like murdering the guy but just some like setup for this being a person that might not necessarily follow starfleet's every word and command right um so now um we'll go ahead and unless you have something else that you wanted to do before the actual mission um i think skipping forward to the um dead of night would be would be a good place to pick up um so who is it that you're bringing um down to the surface here are we uh just assuming that the delivery of the the equipment yeah that already happened last time we made the rolls um oh sure okay gotcha yeah Um, so, uh, I'm bringing, um, Commander Sar mm-hmm. and, uh, of course, Lieutenant Archer. Well, actually, you know what? Just everybody here. Let's okay. bring everybody here. Um, <clears throat> and, uh. Did you want me to come or did you want me to stay on the ship? No, I want, I want you to come because there's, okay. I mean, there's still stuff to be done. I mean, it's not like menial tasks or anything. Okay. But um, I will confer with you two. Uh, okay. Before, before, oh, go ahead. No, um, it, I think that it makes sense, like, <laughs> either, and we haven't done this before, like, either um, Commander Kepler can go down, or we can choose this moment to put in a, like, secondary character, like, maybe a, a, a support character that PB could play um that is just like a random security officer if you wanted to we could do that i can look over it real quick no i mean we don't need to do that uh, yeah. i have other things on the planet that like we still need to talk to the Cardassian okay. uh force the security force um and that kind of thing and i would like kepler to to yeah. be a part of that okay <clears throat> um uh- and there was another thing. Um, um, oh, the riots. Like, we want to uh, actually go where the riots were okay. and search for evidence and stuff. Hmm. All right. So uh, it's probably in the planet cycle um, in the late afternoon, evening. Uh, the sun is just setting and the sunset on this planet has a really interesting interaction with the atmosphere where it turns the um, like parts of the atmosphere do a little kind of like aurora. They get a little um, uh, reactive with the solar flares from the, the sun when it gets to that particular angle on the uh, surface. So you arrive at the bar. The city is, it's a little bit more industrial looking than the previous settlement that you went to on the same planet where the previous settlement was very much like white stucco buildings, kind of calm and uh, pastoral. This is more of a, a city looking atmosphere. Lots of buildings crammed close together. Lots of metals in um, the architecture there's you can tell that both federation colonists and some of the buildings have been put up hastily by uh, the cardassians they're a lot more militaristic some of which have also been uh, graffitied on it's not super clean you can see that there was a lot of respect and care for the previous colony that they obviously really 
um, were proud of where they lived, whereas in this area, there's a lot less of that. It looks it looks like the people here are not necessarily super happy that they live here anymore. You could see where it used to be a lot more put together, but it's, it's just um, been mistreated a little bit. There's people in the streets, but you can see them point out the time or point out the sunset and then hurry home. You remember hearing uh, tell in the previous colony that um, people didn't feel safe to be out after sunset. Um, so as you, like, you transport down and as you walk along the streets on your way to the dead of night, um, there's not a lot of people out, out and about in the streets in a place where you might ordinarily expect that the nightlife, because it's this popular bar, um, might be a little bit more, um, loud and 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 not necessarily creating a ruckus but there would be more people just like out and talking like no one is outside the building almost looks deserted except for you can see at the edges of these blocked windows that there's still light um coming out so are you gonna do anything or prep each other before you go in or um i would like to go over like what our argument, our fake argument is going to be about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Before that. <clears throat> All right. Before we go in there, it'd be good to have an idea. Not, necessar not necessarily a memorized script. It has to feel like it's off the cuff, but Lieutenant Archer, I need to know, um, do you identify at all with Amaki? Can you see things from their side? Uh, I, I, absolutely, sir. It's uh, when people are in crisis, it's easy to blame those in power. And that's that's where they're coming from. They don't see the bigger picture. They only see what's right in front of them. It's, it's easy to make a microcosm out of the situation. Right. Do you believe that they should stay or they should move? The people here? Yes. I think if the Federation wants them to move, they should move. Why is that? Because the Federation has deemed it correct. You didn't answer me. Because that's that's it's it puts it puts more people in danger. It's for the greater good. All right. So, you agree that putting people out of homes they've built and farms they've cultivated, if it's for saving people's lives, it's the correct thing to do. Yes, sir. All right. Well, there's our argument. <clears throat> Except it'll be switched, of course. Right. <laughs> so I need to say that I want I want to stay here because I they, it's, this is our this was their home. They shouldn't be taken out of their home. This is where they've put planted down roots, so to speak. Exactly. And you need to come at it with kind of a. <clears throat> a reserved fervor, like, like a boxer who's, who's uh, pulling his punches a little bit, because you have to remember that you're a Starfleet officer, but walk the line of insubordination. If it's too overt, it'll give, give us away. I understand. If, if it has no fangs, no one will believe it. All right. And uh, Commander Saar. Yes, Captain. Your job will be uh, to back me up so she appears like she's being ganged up on. Indeed. Lieutenant Kepler. Oh, excuse me, Commander Kepler. Yes, Captain. Where do you see yourself in this situation?
I can be a catalyst. I can take her side in a what seems like a friendly debate, and at the last last bit, I will side with you, and then she can feel outraged that uh, we're the only ones that uh, don't see it the way she does, or she's the only one, rather, that sees it the way she does. And Agreed. That can, yeah, that can be what sets off the, the final argument in her leaving or us leaving or... I think uh, uh, Commander uh, Sara and I leave first. You try to console her, and she okay. is inconsolable. Understood. Sound doable? Sounds doable. All right. Time to get your game faces on, people. <sighs> OK, so um, with all of that gone over, um, you all walk into this bar. And as soon as you walk in in your uniforms, you hear um, the hubbub and everything kind of quiet down. There are um, some tables. It's fairly dim in the corners. It looks like it was probably done intentionally. Um, the bar is well stocked with um, not synthahol, with actual bottles. Um, you have a feeling that the barman or someone who runs this establishment might have a connection to get things not necessarily just from Starfleet. Um, it being that Starfleet tends to err more on the side of Synthahall, just in case you need to like turn off that drunkenness real quick to get into uh, a serious uh, discussion or, or what have you. Um, it does have a small late model replicator at the bar as well, in case you were to order something that they don't have on hand. Um, there are groups of people here and there. Um, you heard more of their conversation as you were opening the doors, just various grievances against um, Cardassians, someone talking about um, their family. Um, other people are, are negotiating with um, scantily clad uh, men, women, and people of indeterminate gender. Um, who are obviously displaying their wares, as it were. Um, this is definitely a place that is um, fairly busy, and also um, you could tell that they were trying to, from the outside, kind of conceal exactly how many people were in here with the, the windows being uh, covered up, and um, there was also some kind of padding or, like extra layer put on the front of the building that you can tell is trying to muffle the noise um, to outside. Mm. Um, so you walk in and, and people quiet down and look at you. Um, and you can tell that being Starfleet kind of makes you stand out here. Even though they're all Federation colonists, Starfleet is another level. Right. <clears throat> so I walk in with everybody. Um, it's, I'm putting on an air of, of a job, a day well done, a job well done. We helped, we helped some farmers. We got their equipment running and that kind of thing. And um, I order us. Now, this is something that's always been weird to me. Like if I want to order something from a bar, that's not a Starfleet bar, how do I pay for it? <laughs> Um, my guess is that uh, this is probably fairly common on any kind of Federation settlement. Uh, they probably just bill Starfleet. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, there's definitely structures in place, so you don't have to worry about that. If you were outside of the Federation, you would probably have to request um, to be given some kind of money of the place that you were in that you could use sure. to trade. But anywhere inside the Federation, they would know, like, you're Starfleet, you're wearing the uniform, like, we just bill <laughs> Starfleet. Cool. Well, then I, knowing that, I, I order uh, a round of drinks, uh, whatever they want. I get a, I get a, like, a synthahol, just a beer. Um, and I pass, pass out the drinks, um, if they're having any. And... Uh, uh, yes, I will pretend to have one. I will have one. <laughs> I mean, if it's Synthahol, then it won't mess you up unless, like, Synthahol is made so that you can, like, shake off the tipsy at any moment. Like, it's... Yeah, you can, you can, you're basically, like, the dude at the batch probably goes, I wish I wasn't as drunk. Oh, I'm not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, Synthahol is, is 
made so that it doesn't taste as good, but it also doesn't fuck you up. <clears throat> All right. So I pass out the drinks and I... And as you guys enter and go to the bar, like, people get the vibe that you're not there to cause trouble or to arrest someone. So voices kind of slowly speak up again. And when you go to the, by the time you get to the bar and actually place your drinks, right. drink orders, like people kind of like settle down a little bit. Okay. Um, and I, I do a toast, not like shouting, but enough. So anybody that's within like 20 feet, I'll hear, but I give a toast to Starfleet and the good work we do. We all did a great job today. You're all to be commended. Excellent work. Thank you, Captain. I drink. I thank you, Captain. I'm just going to cheers like a little bit nonchalantly and just kind of be like, thank you, Captain. Something wrong, Archer? No, sir, nothing. Nothing's wrong. She just looks back at her drink. Oh, come on, Lieutenant. Out with it. We're all having a drink. We're all having fun. Let's just let's keep the conversation going. Sir, I I mean no disrespect, but I I I don't want to see these people taken from their homes. Taken from their homes. This is this and she she kind of like sets her drink down a little harder and she says this is this is their home. This is where they live. This is their livelihood for us, for us to force them to leave. This is where, this is where they belong. Lieutenant, it's an M-class planet among millions of M-class planets. One's very much like the others. But sir, wouldn't you consider <clears throat> Earth like that as well? And that's important to to us so this is important to these colonists and it's well, we're talking about a planet that is completely inhabited this planet is a handful of people at best you can't i mean that's not even a fair comparison i mean you also know that the treaty gave this land to cardassia so it's not even technically in federation space so that's something that you could bring up yeah. And this land, according to the treaty that both sides signed, is technically Cardassian. Don't you think that if you owned a, a plot of land and some, <clears throat> and I and I say, okay, this is what happens. Okay. Uh, if I own a plot of land and uh, groundhogs are living there. Do I have the right to evict them from my land if I want to farm it or use it for whatever means I see necessary? <laughs> are, I, I'm sorry. Are you comparing the colonists to rodents? Maybe it was a poor example, Commander, but... Uh, sir, you get, that's, my, you get my meaning. That's not that's not right at all. And the the, the Cardassians have been have been brutal and to these people. They they hold nothing back. They're she's right. They're very very underhanded about how they're dealing with them as well. We don't have any evidence of that. All we have is hearsay. All we have is rumor. I believe these oh, these people on. are good people. If we go with what is law currently the federation the cardassian the cardassians silence agreement together so you i feel going any further beyond what is law and what is written what is proven yeah but did they allowed. talk to these people before they signed that agreement how do we know the cardassians weren't just lying if they'll attack colonists they could lie on a treaty we don't know that Okay. We have to, that's, we, that's there's a, no treaty without good faith. Without faith in, in what the other person says they will do, there would be no treaty at all. And why did Starfleet have faith in the Cardassians? Why would they even do that? They've, they've been monsters. Again, where's your evidence of this? 
sure, the people we, of this colony, we, these we, good people. And she like gestures to the, <laughs> to the bar. And um, I definitely think that before we continue um, this conversation, like there's a role to be made to um, say like basically like how many people are paying attention to you? How right. well are you drawing attention? So I think because uh, the captain is like the one in charge, um, it's going to be a zero uh, difficulty role. So it's just depending on like how well you're doing, basically putting on okay. this show. Um, but I definitely think it's presence and probably it's not. Is that all of us? Uh, no, it's just okay. like we're just basically like rolling it into one thing because it's not like there's no difficulty to it. It's just like how how many people are paying attention. I think it's presence and probably it's not command because you're not commanding anybody. I think it's security because it's all part of the mission, right? Okay. So roll those and however many successes you get um, will determine how well. Um, people are paying attention to listening to you and like how well you're pulling it off basically. Okay. And can I use composure as part of this for a focus? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. There we go. Okay. Whoa, fuck. Okay. Um, so this would be the opportunity where someone can say like, okay, I'm definitely helping here and you're all like fictionally helping. So like if someone yes. else wants to, I, am happy to I will assist. Yeah. I will happily assist. <laughs> Go ahead. You'll only roll one die. Um, but I think what, what it is, is that the, at this point, <clears throat> the bar one, everyone else is having their own conversations and two, they're kind of like pointedly ignoring you because your federation they don't want you to feel like included they also they don't want to give you the attention so like but like let's see who else can like maybe attract attention with their okay so kepler your your points definitely gain an ear um if anyone else wants to roll how do i yeah. select just one oh, die? but that was presence and engineering it's gonna be it's oh. gonna be it's gonna Sorry. be presence and uh presence or daring i would say um and security for anyone who would my like bad, to help you roll bad. one die by doing task roll one okay cool okay so that didn't go as well wow oh. that's a big old 20. but yep. um <laughs> commander sar definitely um got people's attention with his very um let's say your voice is deeper than the average crowd member and so they like turn and hear you because it's not like the normal like human voice. It's like you you hear something out of the ordinary, and so you pay more attention to it. And since everyone else rolled, why don't we just get um? Oh, you did, Archer. Okay, so th did. they're also paying attention to you because they hear you like kind of on their side. Um, I gesture. But I think <laughs> you people. also yeah. And I think what happens complication wise. Um, and I already spent the threat to make this happen. So, um, oh God, what happens is you're having this conversation and it's getting a little loud. Um, people will start to pay attention, especially to Archer. And then, um, after Archer to Sar as he makes his like counterpoint. Um, and just as you guys are noticing that the crowd is kind of listening to you they've they've quieted down again but it's not out of like fear or disrespect it's more because like they're trying to eavesdrop um someone from outside the bar runs in runs behind the bar and whispers in the bartender's ear who then like you see his face go a little serious and you see him put his hand under the bar and like he's oh. pressing something and then inside the bar walks two Cardassian soldiers, um, one of which oh, no. is obviously uh, a little bit higher oh, ranking than the other. Um, they're walking with confidence. Um, they're kind of like arrogantly. Um, and um, they walk in. And when you walked in, people kind of quieted down a little bit but when the Cardassians walk in everyone just immediately stops talking it's completely quiet and they're just all glaring at the Cardassians um so much for that plan and um the higher ranking one um who you would know is a uh, Glynn so it's not um it's not the goal that's stationed here it's like a lower ranking um officer if you have any familiarity with 
uh, Cardassian um, officers, which you would from doing all the research you've done. Um, he walks up to the bartender and demands uh, a drink from him, which the bartender pours because like he's not going to start a fight in his own bar. But um, he's not making any small talk. And he's definitely just, he's not into it. Um, so he walks to the bar and he says, uh, a drink, good sir. I'll have some canar. I know you have a store of it here. Why so quiet in here? And then he looks over to the four of you and says, oh, must be the Federation, huh? The Starfleet officers. I didn't know that this was a bar that you would frequent. We frequent lots of bars. Starfleet has many, many different people from many different planets. Which you are now a part of. Well, the Federation anyway. <clears throat> the Cardassians are part of the Federation. I don't think so. We might have a treaty, but that doesn't mean we're one of you. A treaty that you barely uphold. Ooh. And he... Lieutenant. <sighs> Yeah, he, he like looks at you basically <laughs> waiting for that. And then like when you're chastised, he um, probably like nods and say, yes, Lieutenant, best keep your mouth shut when in the presence of a, and he like looks you up and down, superior officer. Gross. <laughs> Sorry. And um, I... Uh yeah, I think that, like, while the Glen is talking to you, you notice that the bar has kind of, like, there's less people. You didn't see them leave, but all of a sudden, like, there's definitely less people in the bar. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> And the people who remain look like the rough and tumble type of people. And oh, they're God. all, like... <laughs> meandering closer to the bar and like sitting with their like phasers on the table and like it's definitely like everyone who remains is ready for a fight i crack my knuckles <laughs> <laughs> and i think the glenn and like his his other officers kind of just like standing by the door as you know watching everyone and the glenn turns to you and says uh, if you're visiting this colony, you best pay a visit to the security office here. Uh, I heard that the Federation had sent someone into the demilitarized zone, but I didn't hear that you'd be here. It's no good to not report your movements within Cardassian territory. Funny that you mentioned that. After I had a drink with my uh, compatriots here. I was on my way over there to speak to you about the, uh, the dust up, the riot, as it's called by these people, um, to suss out the cause and possibly solutions, uh, to, uh, quelling for further, uh, mistrust among uh, the settlers and yourselves. I was just expounding the merits to my lieutenant of the treaty that the Federation and Cardassians hold and trying to get her to understand that trust is necessary for these things. I'll say to you what I said to Hudson and that is the Cardassians can handle any so-called dust-ups within their own territory. We don't need you Federation Starfleet officers to handle our own messes. We're not here to tell you how to do your jobs. We're just here to make sure that our citizens are healthy and safe. And that's all. I believe in the treaty, and I believe that you will <clears throat> hold up, that the Cardassians will hold up their end of the bargain, just like any honorable people. I roll my eyes. <laughs> Do you have an issue, Lieutenant? 
Sir, the Cardassians aren't holding up their end of the bargain at all. These people, and I gesture again to the bar, mm -hmm. these good land working folk are suffering because of the Cardassians taking. Lieutenant, you are getting dangerously close to insubordination. <laughs> and the Cardassian like laughs under his breath. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you find amusing. Oh, it's just, it's, it's always good to see the um, Starfleet composure at work, you know. Hmm. You mean the composure that knows the regulations that, in the treaty, while this may be Cardassian space, the Federation is free to check up on its citizens, regardless of where they exist in the Federation. So even if we did decide to look into the scuttles, uh, I believe that would be within our jurisdiction. Absolutely. Look into them all you like. You'll find no wrongdoing here. Is that so? It is. How close to this location that we're in right now, how close were the, uh, the riots happening? Oh, here and there. There have been so many I can't care to recount them. We've filed the appropriate reports with Federation authorities right. as the terms of the treaty lay out. And he, like, turns to, like, take a look at Commander Saar. And then he says, if you were wishing to visit the security office, you'll have to do that so during business hours. Me and my man here are off work and ready for a drink. And he, like, puts down his empty glass on the bar, and the bartender just, like, stares at him as he refills it. Well, so you suggest my apologies, Captain. Well, I trust that since I have other matters that, I'm, that I must need attending to. Sir, they torture people. And he, like, does the, like, who, me? <laughs> My pearls. <laughs> Lieutenant, we'll discuss your recent actions tomorrow at the briefing. Until then, I strongly advise you to shut that mouth of yours. And she just keeps drinking. Well, looks at everyone in the bar. <clears throat> Like this. <laughs> There's someone who's like, what are you gonna do about at it? a table, like probably like two tables over, um, a like younger man who meets your gaze and is like, yeah, you tell. Him. Okay, good. <laughs> I trust that if I were to. make my way to do the duties I aforementionedly discussed that no one of my staff or of my, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of the word. What does a captain call his? Crew? Not, crew, crew, thank you, fuck. Oh, yeah, no, I, I lose words sometimes Seriously, too. Just crew, I couldn't think of it. All right, I trust that my crew will be safe from harm and I, drink the rest of my drink, and I put it down. You'll have no problems here, Captain. I hope you have a pleasant stay. In fact, if you have any, if you need any recommendations for, and he like glances to the one like very brave remaining uh, prostitute, basically, um, it says if you have any, if you need any recommendations for an evening's entertainment, be happy to discuss it at the office tomorrow but i am also wanted elsewhere and he like sets down his empty drink doesn't even make any mention of like paying for it like and the bartender like doesn't say anything so it's obvious that they've like already had their disagreements or just not um but he sets down his empty glass and he says i'll be going now and he looks yeah. around to the rest of the bar and he says best not hear of any traitorous talk here again and then like goes to leave commander sar just looks at him as he's on his way out and kind of yells at him i believe you drank two beverages 
Oh, yes. And he looks to the bartender who's like, why the fuck did you call him back? You know, like his eyes go wide. And he says to the bartender, um, put it on my tab. And then like walks out. Um, Oh, 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 oh. I'll just go ahead and say, like, if you were attempting to read the minds of either of these Cardassians, you would find them, like, much too well defended to be read. Sure. Like, they're uh, blank slates. <clears throat> basically meaty, meaty almost Ferengi. Mean Man, that was a heavy scene. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's... I let them walk out no i honestly like i was sitting here going like i was going to walk up to uh the lieutenant because i thought they were going to stay for a minute and i was going to leave and before i left i was going to tell the lieutenant like swing at him <laughs> i mean okay they can still be walking out if you want to have her like take some aggressive action right Oh yeah, if you but just that give means me I eyes, have... I'll do it. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they you did can... it in my presence, I would have to take her to the ship. That's, yeah. yeah. That's um, what I figured. I would say, reading the room, you have a feeling that it would turn into a much bigger fight. One you could okay. probably, like... It would it would be it would be obvious enough that like all of these people are ready for a fight and if it started it would be like a ruckus that you could easily accidentally leave someone behind in and the Cardassians wouldn't like know that you're up to something. So if that's what you want to do, like it wouldn't just be like one punch and then it ends. Like these people have right. like guns on the table, like silently, right. like ready for someone to do something out of line, you know? Okay. Um, you could also just let them go and talk to them tomorrow or whatever. <laughs> Again, it's also it's also up to Holly, right? Because you yeah. could just take your role and be like, this is the time where I prove that I'm a rebellious anti-Cardassian oh. officer and punch them Isn't in the face. Isn't there a slur yeah. for them? There's Spoon some heads. For them, right? Spoon, Spoon heads, heads, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... I I, I'm happy to start punching. That was my plan anyway. <laughs> okay. Can no, I yeah. communicate? I can't like communicate you can't telepathically. You can communicate right? telepathically right. unless okay. you knew her a lot better. Right. Okay. Okay. You, you can, can wink at me. You can probably communicate telepathically with Sar because you've been like he's your first officer and he's also a Vulcan, so they already have telepathic tendencies. But otherwise, you can only telepathically communicate with people that you're really, really close to, like a lover or something. All right. If you want to telepathically tell me to. Punch a bitch. <laughs> you were supposed to be on the other side of this argument. I'm just gonna. Yeah, but he was also very illogically disrespecting the entire crew. Yeah. Like... Yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna I, uh... mutter spoonhead. Can I just do that, like really low, because they're they're not facing us anymore. So if I'm just like, you know, if I say that, I'm sure. Yeah, I probably gonna say. I was gonna say it too. Yeah. Just as they walk out, like, just whisper it, like, mm, yeah. hate, hate those spoonheads. Filthy spoon head. Yeah, Filthy exactly. Spoon head. <laughs> um, okay, so you whisper it. I, I, whichever one of you wants to be the one like doing it. Well, she, she should probably do it. Okay, so uh, Lieutenant Archer whispers like filthy spoon head underneath uh, her breath. And the Cardassian Gil, Glenn, um, hears you, stops walking, turns around with like a smile on his face and says... I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Do you have something to say to me? And she just, <laughs> she just, she'll just look up at him and say, I called you a filthy spoonhead and she's going to deck him. <laughs> <laughs> with the cup in her hand, she's just going to like punch him with the, with the like, the beer stein. Okay. All right. So <laughs> an like bar fight style. An unarmed attack. Um, you would roll, I think, fitness and security. Okay. Um, and it's versus their, uh, fitness and security f for, uh, hand-to-hand. -hand. You have hand-to-hand -hand combat, so. Yeah, I do. So I get a. You get the focus. The Cardassian yeah. soldier does not. 
Is it still on a one too? Um, it's a versus. Okay. So I'm just gonna uh, make a new uh, character sheet real quick. So the the task roll I just keep on a one though. Uh yeah. Or, uh, you okay. do task two because like you're rolling okay. the two dice that you'd ordinarily roll. Okay. Okay, so fitness and security for the Cardassian. Bum, 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 bum. Ba -da 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 -da. So I can just roll. Dun, 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 uh -huh. dun. I'm just okay. filling out this sheet real quick. For the Glen. Because I didn't plan on this, but it's fine. <laughs> He's fine. It should be fairly easy. Um, I am a scientist. Can I just put that out there? I am really <laughs> not looking forward to this. I just like like why are Cardassians just so blatantly evil? <laughs> like, uh, they're they're just they're Nazis. It's fine. <laughs> it's like they're just so blatantly. Okay, so evil. the Cardassian gets uh gets their two successes. So you have to get more than that. Um. So as an opposed task, there's one character attempting to do something, another seeking to resist. Um, both characters attempt to task normally with a base difficulty of one. Um, each character can have a different difficulty, but I don't think that you do. Um, so you go ahead and roll fitness and security. Okay. Roll it again. Did you? Oh, you got it. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So you got a... Uh, a one and the Cardassian got a two. So the active character fails and the reactive character succeeds. So um, you go for the punch, but the Cardassian is going to like duck out of the way and come back at you. He's too fast. He is too fast. Um, so an unarmed strike is melee. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> He's just going to take me out. So he gets. We won't let that happen two successes with one effect so you'll take two down on your stress okay um and the effect um let me just check real quick for fighting because it's different um we getting in a fight and I'm Lily just not wants sure to get into fights how the fight mechanics work but it's fine okay combat you're within like range um it's not like a real combat thing it's just ma like there's a lot of different like combat rules but it's like just it's a lot is what it is so um oh i also have two determination i don't know what i need to do with those but i could have used that to punch him yes right uh-huh um so instead of him him winning i could use a determination to allow myself to succeed uh that would give you two automatic successes yes Oh, okay. I'm going to do that. Okay. Because I want to win. All right. So um, then instead. <laughs> also, you're impressing all of us right now if you yeah. smash this guy in the face. So. Yeah. Okay. So instead, you'll go ahead and get a one extra success. So you would roll um, the die, um, the uh, challenge dice. I think okay. an unarmed attack for a human. Um let me just see. I th I'm pretty sure that uh, the damage rating is too increased by the character's discipline, um, which is security. So you'd have five, right? What's your security? My security is four because I'm young. Okay. Um, so you'd have six? Six challenge dice that you would roll? Okay. So I put that in the little thing next to them? Next to challenge die, yes. Okay. And I roll them. Oh, it says no attribute was found. That's weird. No attribute was found? Yeah. Uh, fitness security. Okay, so it worked for me. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what was different. Um, my, well, I, can, you want to try again? Yeah. Okay. I mean, because I put the six in there. Yeah, there you oh, go. I think there it goes. It, okay. it works for you now. So you rolled six dice. The Cardassian, um, let me just give them their uh, stress. They take two stress and two complications. So they're going to add one of the complications as, um, I think that they add it as momentum to you um, because, like, it's basically like I'm 
paying for not taking an injury by um, giving you a, th- a threat, as it were. Um, right. So I'll add a momentum uh, to you guys. Let me just yes. give you that. Um, I'm not 100% sure how the layer, token layer. Um, and then uh, I think the the next thing is the he gets a complication of like embarrassed probably. <laughs> yeah, because this, this little girl just punched him in the face. Yeah, with her stein no less. Like mm-hmm. so, like, um, his complication is just gonna make it a little bit harder for him to succeed in like the next round of combat. Um, so if like, what are you what are you doing now, like, um, Cardassian? I am in awe. Lily just <laughs> punched this dude in the face. Yeah, with with a stein. It's and impressive. I just did it break. Uh, what do we, yes. What do we see there? Did it like shatter? Yeah, describe describe this describe this punch. Yeah, I just want her like to go in with her small but fierce form, and just like go straight just straight for his face with this like I'm trying to think of like what cup it would look like like one of those like one of those beer steins those glass like beer steins but it's a little weird looking because it's Star Trek so it's like <laughs> okay. slightly curved. Do you like do you like uppercut him with it or do you just smash it right into his face? I, I imagine just like it's like yeah, like right just like Yeah like right onto his like cheek and oh you see like his face God. wobble like And I imagine yeah. he gets cut because it breaks. Oh, yeah. man. oh my goodness. That's, yeah, a, that's I feel like he likes his face, so it's like give him like a scar now. So I've got a, an enemy for life, even though I'm just faking it. It's not fake. Cardassians are dicks. Okay. They are yeah. dicks. No, you're right. Huge dick. So after this fight, um, um, like in the, in the middle of it, like yeah. during something of this, I want to jump in. Like, I'm not just going to let this happen. Okay. But <laughs> like everyone else in the bar is like automatically, like they were just, they were tense and ready. So like they're jumping sure. to action too. The other Cardassian is as well. Um, they're like, some of the tables are overturned. Um, people are now like, it went from a fist fight to like, they're firing weapons. Um, you hear, oh, no. you hear oh, one wow. of the Cardassians like call for backup. The bartender oh, no. like disappears behind the bar. Um, so like you could be trying to pull Lily back, but like everyone else in the bar is not having it. Time to set phasers to stun ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So yeah, like with that, fist. with that uh, in mind, what what would you like to do? Well, I didn't know like it I had it already dissolved. Oh, that they form. were just they were waiting for the chance mm-hmm. to go after these guys. They oh, man. they were until like they were holding themselves in ready until well, someone w- threw the first punch and then they're all on it. I guess I'm wondering if I try to like because what I was gonna do was step in front of Lieutenant Archer. Mm-hmm. And like whisper to her, like throw me down. And you can you can still do that now, like in the middle of things. But like okay. it's high it's high stakes, right? Because like no one will see it. Like, it's, uh, no, it's there's still a chance show. that they'll see it because you're like right in the middle of everything. Okay. And like we can definitely like relay the point where it's like people are firing, but it's the very like Star Trek firing where there's just like phasers in the sides of the image, but no one's actually like hitting anybody. They're just like firing warning shots from behind the table, right? <laughs> okay. So yes, if you would like to do that, like you have the opportunity to. All right. Um, yeah, I get I get in front of Lieutenant Archer. And instead of in uh, saying that, I I uh, just like I'm trying to struggle with her, and I'm looking in her eyes like this is not like real and shit like that. So I <laughs> I, I say uh, like stand down, Lieutenant. That's an order, Commander uh, Sar. Restrain. Uh, are you in the fray, uh, Commander Kepler? Uh, no, I mean, you like, not really. You I'm like ducked back. Like, Holy cow. And I watched her face, face punch that guy. But other than that, no, I haven't gotten up to fight anyone. All right. So mm-hmm. I, I, I say all that stuff as loud as I can mm-hmm. and kind of look around to see if anybody's looking. And then 
you know, I give her, I give her a wink, like, yeah, good job. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> then I turn to the, I like try to get to the Cardassians, like get their attention. Like we don't need this. Stop oh, cease firing. My God. And then I push him to the ground. Okay. So um, is this, this is all again, like a kind of like an act to get people to believe that Lily is like on their side. Well, my goal is mm -hmm. to, yes, that and to get the Cardassians out of here so that she can have some alone time with everybody else. <laughs> I f oh, I feel well, like easy. our better, like the Cardassians are probably, like this is going to become like another one of the riots, but there's definitely an opportunity to like maybe find someone who can get you to safety um like the bartender out, like the like the bartender could get you to safety um uh and try to like convince them to like you know tell you where the back door is um in which case you would have more of an opportunity to like talk in private or like to let lily talk in private um or you could lily, you could lily have the ship like beam you back up um that's something that you could do um because this is just like the city proper it's a bar like there's no protection against transporting um yeah but i don't so, think yeah, that, I, I don't think okay. anyone's I, leaving i'd scream at the cardassians like please cease fire see then i turn back to lieutenant archer find someone that will hide you find someone that will get you out of here all right uh, where's the guy that made eyes to me at me uh, before when I went like this? Uh, he's like, uh, he's still two tables over. His table is now like overturned and he's behind it, like firing out a couple warning shots at the like upper part of the wall and then like ducking back down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to listen to the captain say and just not uh, non-verbally communicate that I heard his order just like, and then I'm going to go duck behind that table and find that guy. Okay, um, nice. so if you could, for me, um, roll uh, a fitness plus security task with difficulty zero. Um, this will okay. just be, like, how, how well you can, like, sprint across the room. Okay. And I have two task dice or whatever that is? Yeah, the regular one. Okay. Please don't get shot. Oh, lovely. Oh. Um, would you like to spend anything to try and succeed here <laughs> oh did i just fail so terribly <laughs> yeah yeah you did oh, okay cool. oh, no. uh i mean you can add a threat you can spend the momentum that you have how much momentum do i have uh there's one momentum okay i'll spend the momentum then okay um so spend that momentum roll another d20 okay <sighs> Oh no. Oh no. Um, so I think um <laughs> what, what happens shower? here is that I was getting checked. Um you have you get there, but you also get like pinged by some phaser fire and you honestly can't like really say whether it's the uh federation colonists or the cardassians that hit you it's just you get hit um so i'm gonna real quick just check I dramatically on... fall behind the table as one does in star trek as one like, does by a phaser fire okay so i'm gonna just roll okay so you take two stress no uh okay no extra complications you just i get... act like i'm way more hurt <laughs> Like, like when I get behind the table and the, the guy's there, I'm just like, please, I need help. You have to hide me. <laughs> okay, so. I'm bleeding. <laughs> I think. Okay, so um, does the rest of the group want to do anything while Archer is uh, running for her life across the room covered in phaser fire? Are you just, like, getting the heck out of there? Are you participating in the fight at all? Are you... Captain, I can, I can beam us out. You say, ducked behind the bar, yeah. like little like phaser shots, like. No, uh, we need to, we need to make our escape and and leave the lieutenant here. So. Oh. I, I've 
already thought of that. Oh. It'll be a malfunction. I can get the three of us out and leave her behind if you'd like. All right, make it so. Okay. Okay, so Roxy, you'll go ahead and roll <laughs> a um, control and engineering. Um, and I'm going to say uh, to get everyone out, um, a fake a lock on um, Lieutenant Archer and like not have it hurt her anymore. Um, I'm going to say this is a difficulty difficulty three um and you have a focus um obviously transporters and replicators okay um and then task roll would be two yes you or roll two every time unless you have momentum or determination spent even the focus the focus just gives you better like oh. you'll, you'll get two successes on um anything five or lower okay Uh, <laughs> okay um so you need two more successes uh you like you have a determination because you haven't spent it yet um you just have an mm -hmm. automatic one and that's two automatic su successes that you can spend or you can um have a complication which would probably mean that lieutenant archer has a little bit of uh uh probably injury from the transporter lock malfunctioning um or like she'd be out um that would probably be the complications i would instill you could add to threat to give you extra die if you need two extra die you'd have to add three to threat you get one for one and then the next one is two so three total um what would you like to do can i use this opportunity to just like loudly say it's not working like we can't uh we can't do that or yeah we'll abs Holly. absolutely you can like just okay. say like i can't do it like it's not working yeah. that's totally not, okay, fine yeah, okay captain it's not working i can't get a lock on us out we have to we have to go out the old-fashioned way which is to run <laughs> all right then okay and so I, I look around the room and i tactically like assess like what the best exit would be okay so that would probably be control and security Okay. To try and assess the best exit, and any of you can obviously try and help with this. Yeah, and I, I'll look to the I'll look to Commander Sar. Okay. Any ideas? So, um, Sar, I would say that you're using um, reason and security, um, and then uh, it's control and security for you, um, Dren. Jesus, my two worst for the task rolls. How many? Uh, you're doing one because you're helping. So task Perfect. roll is one. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any focuses that you think. Oh, um, for getting out of here? <laughs> Not really. Environmental awareness. Yeah, that, that's actually a perfect one. So, yeah. So, um, unfortunately, you got an 18. So, it, that's, it doesn't. But I hadn't put my focus in there for that yet. It would just give you a success on a okay. four or lower, two, a double Double success. Oh my god. Why are you sudden like all of your good Here's luck? Where is all gone. my bad rolls are. <laughs> no, you just you're using like the you gotta worst. Gotta have bad rolls every now and then. The worst of my abilities. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, control is like taking control of a situation and security is definitely what you would need to get out of a firefight. Oh no, I'm not arguing like the yeah, skill. No, no, I'm no. saying like they're um, my worst. <laughs> okay, so uh, same options you can use determination you can add to threat you can like there are a lot of options as to like how to try and get a success on this um kepler got one but i think that if you still fail um like, all right i have a determination i can use okay so um then that will be a automatic success because you get two successes from uh, determination so basically what you see is the Cardassians are coming in from the street side and um, there's only a few of them and they're like kind of trickling in and hiding behind the door and like you know peeking out firing wildly and then peeking back in um, the uh, Federation colonists and or like Maquis um, whatever they are they're probably most of them Maquis 
um, there uh, holding in the bar. But you do see that on the opposite side of the room from the bar in the back corner away from the door in the like darkness that is like intentionally created for people to have some kind of privacy um there is a doorway that is probably the way that um the rest of the bar customers exited when the Cardassians walked in so you would have to do pretty much the same role that Holly did a, a zero a, a difficulty zero fitness and security task to like sprint across the room um to get there without being injured uh but that would that would be your way out okay fitness and security coming at you now why am i rolling two dice is there you always you always roll two dice it's the oh you do yeah two dice is the the like regular roll you roll more um if you have um momentum or something like that and you could roll less if you were helping or um, if there was something else hindering you, but you usually roll. Okay, I was just wondering why their results came out only as one dice. Because and they're like... helping. Because we were helping you, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, gotcha, all right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you get across just fine, uh, Captain. Um, Commander Kepler gets across just fine. Oh, thank God. Your fitness <laughs> and security are not great. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're really bad. <laughs> and then, uh, Sar? Oh my God. Fitness and security? Yep just to run across the room without getting pinged by I'm still behind a table pretending to be okay you're fine you just rolled the one but like it's still a success you only need one it's the difficulty zero task so you all dart across the room managing to weave your way between tables maquis people firing you see um uh archer behind one of the tables um do you do anything when you see these people like running past you do you like call out to them do you like try and pretend to ignore them or uh when i see my crew leave yeah oh um no no i just i just pretend like i know that i'm gonna get like court-martialed for like punching a cardassian so i'm just i'm just like hiding behind the table in fact i duck away so they don't see me okay um so the three of you get get out um i'm not gonna like make you roll for finding your way out of the back side of a bar it's fine um, and, uh, Holly, you, um, find yourself next to a stranger, um, who is pretty well aware of where you side in terms of, like, being against the Cardassians and for the colonists. And he looks down at you and he says, you got a phaser? I just looked at him like, Yeah. And he says, well, now would be the time to use it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and call it there. Uh, You've definitely caught the attention. Before before we do that. Yeah. um, I I just don't want to forget this. Uh, Once us three get outside, I want to, to, as soon as we get like, I don't know, anywhere that seems semi-safe, I want to grab Commander Kepler. And um, I want to say, all right, Commander, what I want you to do is I want you to wait a little bit, give it a few minutes. As soon as the firing stops and, the, and everything is kind of calmed down in there, I want you to go back and look for uh, Lieutenant Archer. So it looks like we came back for her. I don't want it to seem like we just left her there because that's not what Starfleet would do, okay? So Understood, go in Captain. and look for her. I don't necessarily want you to find her, of course, but make the effort. Understood. Okay, and that's definitely something that we can, like, off-screen. Like, she did it. She made the point of, like, coming back a little bit later when you heard the phaser fire die down. And, obviously, Archer was nowhere to be seen, as most of the Maquis had already, like, skedaddled. Um, One of the Cardassians probably died um, and is, like, being hauled off. uh, just by one of the humans uh, a couple of the other Cardassians were probably injured enough to get them to like back off for the time being um, and yeah uh, I think that it's it's safe to say that in both speaking up for the colonist and uh, actually firing upon the Cardassian security officers um, Archer has won, uh, won the Maquis trust so you were wow. successful 
Um, and next episode, we did it. we'll we'll see uh, what that trust counts for, and if you can get a location that the rest of the crew can lock in on or if you can get some information about like why the maquis are doing what they're doing or what your plans are moving forward um you do have the um transporter pattern enhancer um but you don't necessarily have the ability to contact your crew straight away because the maquis will still be watching you closely um so um before we go um, everybody, thank you so much again for joining us for Star Trek Adventures. I really appreciate all of you being a part of the cast. It's been super, super fun, and you're all so excited about all the Star Trek bullshit. So thank you <laughs> for Yay. being excited with me and for like allowing me to just be like, I really want this one admiral to be in this, so <laughs> can we just do a short scene so that this admiral can be there? Um, uh, where can we find you and what are you up to for the next little bit before our final episode? Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, the illustrious uh, Lieutenant Archer. Yay. Um, yes, yeah, so hello everyone. I'm, I'm Commander Holly everywhere, not Lieutenant Holly. Um, <laughs> but I'm so glad that I get to punch people in this game. Archer's the best. <laughs> um, yeah, and you can just find me here on twitch.tv slash Commander Holly or on twitch.tv slash D&D. And this weekend I'm doing a big crossover stream with Penny Arcade. So my regular D&D game will be uh, having a giant crossover stream with uh, two DMs and both of our groups. And it's going to be real insane. So tune in for that this weekend. It's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, so that's why Blue Jay and I will not be playing Stardew Valley, sadly, because I'll be, I'll be on my way I'm again. Sad. Again, I know I'm on my way every, every week. It's... It's, it's okay. Summer is super busy. I know it's the worst, but I just want to farm. So I'm also, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling the, the farming withdrawal. Um, um, this definitely helps to fill that void though. We still get to see each other. That's um, true. <laughs> other people that are, uh, have been doing exciting things. Uh, Zeke, any more, uh, uh, charity goals Ooh, that you have to COVID. fulfill this next week or uh, not this next week but the week after so a week from tomorrow is my oh my god and i tried watching some and i just couldn't do it my asmr cast which i promised i would do oh no um, what yeah oh what date is this i must be there a week from tomorrow the 18th it's going to be after after drop frames um, I will be doing an ASMR cast <laughs> and, uh, I, I was like asking my mods about it. And, and one of them said, Oh, try to check this out. And I, oh, she's live right now. And I, I went and watched and I went, Oh God, this is like, cause ASMR like has the exact opposite effect on me. No. Yeah. All of that shit, like the whispering and the, and the, like the noises and stuff, they just, they trigger something like a fight or flight in me. I'm just like, oh, God, I can't turn it off. Well, but, hopefully it'll be different when you're the one doing it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can do it. It's it's that when other people are doing it, it just, it's very strange. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a task, but I'm going to take it seriously. This will not be a joke. I will really try and make this like a real like cast. It's not going to be like, you know, multiple Are you going to do the like fingers on the microphone or are you just doing oh, yeah. it? Well, okay. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. oh, no, wow. there's gonna be like tapping and and clicking and possibly possibly chewing. I don't know. Some ah! whispering oh, and blowing and all that stuff. No, all the good ASMR. Like we're gonna tick a lot. Tick the, oh. like the main boxes for ASMR. Beautiful. For sure. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, that's that's well, happening we're in a week from tomorrow. Looking forward yep. to that. Um, <laughs> I have to watch that. PB, yeah, is there anything amazing. that you're doing that can even come close to the nope. ASMR? <laughs> nope. PB's um, like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, no, you can find me at twitch.tv slash pumpkinberry. I play games um, and I also host a podcast called The Deep Dive, which you can check out at deepdivecast.com. And it talks about video games and it's usually me and my co-host. And then we have a guest come on and we just deep dive and have a conversation about life, the universe and how it relates to the video game that we're that, uh, talking about that day. So that's, that's about it. Brad. Definitely no ASMR stuff. <laughs> you do do watercolor Wednesdays though, which is super calming that's and true. nice. That's like that's my, true. my type of, um, like 
ASMR. It's not ASMR, but it's like that like calming Zen energy, which I find super relaxing. ASMR isn't something that really does it for me, but I think that everyone has their like different thing that like calms their nerves. And for some people it's ASMR and for other people it's weird YouTube videos of people shopping for clothes. And like, I've definitely watched those Um, anyway. Um, and for some people, it's finding a house in Texas and finally being able to put down yes. roots. Yay. DJ. Uh, hi. So of DJ Knight, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash DJ Knight. I am not really doing anything major stream wise, just focusing on, like I kind of decided like I was going to get back to basics because I, I kind of spread out and did a lot of variety and I'm trying to get back, like hone it back to the games that are my favorites. But uh, this weekend, I'm actually going to be in an event with First uh, Robotics uh, down in Indianapolis. So that's actually going to be pretty sweet. I'm going to do some hosting for that on the official First uh, Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash First Inspires. So if you want to see me do anything outside of my regular stream stuff, that is what I will be up to. I believe that is going to be Friday and Saturday. Can I ask a quick question? Is what? it like a robotic show? What is happening? Uh, with uh, It is... Like it's it's a multifaceted event. It's like a uh, <clears throat> for for all intents and purposes, what first does is it teaches students from kindergarten through senior year of high school uh, how to learn, or not really how to. It's like it teaches them STEM fields by using robotics as That's the amazing. goal. So like That's amazing. For, for kindergartners, they get a a Lego We Do kit, which is like a really like a bigger block Lego kit. But there's a kit, there's a specific brick that can animate things, so they can make dioramas that solve real world issues and they have to have something moving so they can do that and then like have a a lego display that what kid doesn't like building lego displays and That's uh, amazing. Like, like one of the ones i saw was students made one where it actually flushed a toilet and like little lego <laughs> poops like went down through the toilet went through pipes they had marbles That's to where amazing. dirty marbles went in clean marbles came out oh that's so uh, cool and then after that, they go to Lego League, uh, first Lego League, which is students or students from age nine to sixteen learn how to uh, get into like they learn the logic for programming, and they actually like have to program with a tablet and a specific brick of a Lego uh, type. And it's like there, there's a four foot by eight foot table that is covered in obstacles. Oh, they have to send That's that incredible. robot to complete obstacles without touching it outside of like a two foot square that area. That sounds like operation times a million. It yeah. is. And I'm seeing like they had, they, this is where it gets interesting because at the first Lego league level, they have two minutes and 30 seconds to complete all these tasks. And that's a four foot by eight foot table with the robot that they make that they, it has to complete all the, as many tasks as possible. Mm -hmm. Then after that, they go to first, uh, tech challenge which they actually get into building real robots so they yes. have to code they have to uh they have to code they have to actually have like shops and build and like just like like there's teams that have mills so that they can like modify the metals they need to get the exact specifications and then after that there's the first robotics competition which is the same kind of thing except they build robots that are like 120 pounds. Jeez. And some of these robots, they have, they design to where other robots should be able to like attach themselves to their robots and do other things. So like, it's ridiculous. That I'm is super amazing. jealous of all the things that these students are able to do, but like they, they've had a couple different events uh, during the summer. And uh, the last one was the Global Innovation Awards where the Lego League students that are ages nine to 16 come up with inventions they brought the top 20 best inventions to the convention center. And then uh, they gave awards like uh, the EV3 bricks that they use for Lego league are like 500 bucks. They oh, gave Jesus. On oh, each wow. one of the teams, one of the, one of those bricks, uh, the top team got an additional $20,000 to uh, work on an invention they created. And the second team got $5,000 to work on. I think it's the, the two runner up teams got $5,000 to work on their projects. And the oh, projects okay. are amazing. Like one of them is a, um, a ball that is a clay ball but it, it also uses metal sensors it can they put it in the soil and it can detect oh. the moisture in the soil it can detect wait uh, the, is this out the of pressure. lego no the the they the whole project starts with lego that they learn to As like robots. a, a oh, demonstration okay. but, but, and right, but, then but they, they have money. but they also have a project that they have to work on and this is the project like some of these students make real world things one of the teams made a uv veggie um they call it like the UV veggie and they've actually like, they have like companies that have looked at it. Like once it quits, you have to check it out, but it's like they, shark tank, but for rays, real. 
Exactly. Yeah. Like they, they take UV rays. And for people who go to other countries and eat the vegetables, like you go to a salad in somewhere where you've never been, the, yeah, the microbes on those are going to destroy you. You're going to mm-hmm. be in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. They have a device that pushes UV rays into vegetables to clean and destroy all those microbes. No. It takes like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, so it's what like was the process date? and they can clean that. What was the date uh, and time for this again for people? Uh, that is yeah. gonna be all this weekend. Uh where it's it's the thirteenth and the fourteenth. Uh follow twitch.tv slash first inspired or uh, first inspires or uh twitter.com forward slash first tweets. There and, you go. Uh, so that sounds super, coolness. super exciting. Yeah, that's a and lot of yeah. cool high tech stuff that we'll see Thank on Star you. Trek in the future, obviously. Yeah, no kidding. Um such awesome. a fan of robots in, in sci fi like even finding out about this was awesome, but the next year's theme is going to be space across oh, all of, there you all go. of the different things. So I was like, wait a minute, you spoke to just, you, you came to me? Yes. It's like, I, I got super excited. Awesome. So, well, that will be yeah. on, uh, like DJ said, twitch.tv slash first inspires. Um, if you want to see more of this show, we'll be on for our final episode next week. Same time. That's Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific, um, 6 p.m. EST. Um, that will be our final episode. Um, if you would like to catch up, it's all on my YouTube. Um, that's a command in chat, exclamation mark YT. Um, we will see you next week. Um, in the meantime, follow all these lovely people. They're all they're all doing really <coughs> rad stuff. Um, and we will see you very, very, very soon. So have a great night, everybody. Live Bye. long and prosper. Bye.